Okay. We are back. All right. So in your journal, and let's write a new set of dates. So 2, 1, 22. And across your top, we're going to write areas or area of trapezoids. So I love that 4.2 kind of already introduced you to what you can do with a trapezoid to turn it into shapes that you're already familiar with. So just as a review, it has three pages left in my math. <laughs> I know, I told you to go fast. So just as a review, we just got done looking at a shape that looked like this. We are going to learn the formula to solve for this, but you also should know that if you forget that formula, you can do whatever you need to do to decompose a shape into shapes that you do remember how to solve for the area for. So after we learn this formula for trapezoids today, let's say it's test day and you forget, don't freak out. Just remember that, oh yeah, I can solve it by thinking of it as a rectangle and two triangles, which therefore make a square. So not all is lost if you can't remember the formula. Um, and as a matter of fact, this is a skill you will need in later math units, learn how to identify smaller shapes within larger shapes to decompose them. So you can always break it down and you could solve for triangle, triangle, rectangle, or rectangle and a square. But there is a formula so you can avoid doing that for trapezoids. So we are going to take this piece of graph paper and for the sake of time on the video, I'm just going to show this to you fairly quickly. Um, but you can go ahead and draw this into your notebook. I'm just doing it on graph paper because I'm going to cut this a, out. Do we need a grid? You won't need a grid. No, no. I'm just doing it because I want to make sure that I cut somewhat straight. Okay. So I am going to create a quick trapezoid here. Now this trapezoid is going to look a little different than the trapezoid that you just saw. And that's okay because what is the definition of a trapezoid? Right, it's got one set of parallel sides, right? And so it's not a parallelogram. Parallelograms have two sets of parallel sides. It's not a rectangular square because we don't have 490 degree angles. This is different and somewhat similar because you still have one set of parallel sides, but the other side, the opposite sides are not parallel. And so if I approach this problem in a test, I could recognize that, hey, look, I can make that into a triangle and I can make this into a triangle. They're both gonna have different bases, but they'll have the same height. And so you would solve for this, solve for that, solve for that, add them all together. But you don't need to do that because there is a formula just for trapezoids. So in a trapezoid, let's go ahead and mark this one. So this one I'm not going to erase. So you can put this one on your paper. Again, taking these notes so you can use them on your test. All right, and we are going to call this B1 and B2. What do you possibly think base 1 and base 2? So we're going to kind of put that down here like as an aha. So H still equals height, and B1 equals base 1, and B2 equals base 2. Now for the formula, for the purposes of the formula right now, it doesn't matter which one is base one or base two. However, in a problem that says, now let's say base two doubles, well then you're gonna have to know which one base two is, right? But for right now, in the formula, we're not gonna have to differentiate between the two. All right, and then of course we have a right angle here. Okay, so, you do not have to do what I am going to do to solve for the trapezoid, but just like we did for the triangle and the parallelogram, I want to kind of show you um, what you are doing with the formula that I'm gonna show you here in a bit. So I am going to take this straight edge, and again, you don't have to do this. This is just illustrating. And this is like two, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna locate the halfway point on the height and the corner. So I'm halfway up the height to the corner here. And I'm just going to draw a straight line all the way across that. 
Yeah, that's okay. I'm just gonna draw the straight line all the way across. And so don't lose sight that this is base one and this is base two. And actually, I did that incorrectly. All right, we're actually gonna go half on this side. This is the point we want and this is the halfway. That actually will make a huge difference. Okay. All right, so now I'm at the top of the height and halfway up the slant, okay. All right, now this is the fun part. This is going to illustrate why the formula works, okay. So I am going to cut this shape out. Do what? No, no, you do not. I just want to illustrate for you why the formula you're going to see works. I'm going to cut on this line. Okay. So here is my trapezoid. Well, I hope not because... I, no, I am not doing that either. So what I'm going to do is flip this around and turn it into a triangle. Do you know how to solve for the area of a triangle? Yes, I do. What is it? Base times height divided by two. The area of a trapezoid, now this is important. The area of a trapezoid has a different formula but what you are finding is the area of a triangle, as evidenced by... We've already done this before. <laughs> we did it for a parallelogram. So, are you about ready to cry again? It's okay. It's all right. Hang in there, Amelia. We, we got you. We got you. Anybody have, like, a comfort thing for Amelia? Like a blankie? Or... All right. So, we... So, once again, magic trick. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. Except unlike a magician, I will tell you all my tricks. So what did I do? I mean, I know I know, I cut the top off and I moved it, but take a closer look. What, what did I do here? I split it and, ah, uh, yes. And so what I did is I added the dimension of base one to the dimension of base two. So I have a really long base. So what part of a formula for a trapezoid do you think is going to be slightly different than the formula for a triangle? You have to add base one you, plus base yes. two. Yes. Oh my gosh, you base guys are brilliant. Base one plus base two times height divided by two. Yes. Area. And we'll write this back in our notebook. So we've got area of a trapezoid equals exactly what you just told me. Base one. Uh, base plus, one. Plus base two. Yep. Base one plus base two times height. height. Now, you're going to see it again one of two ways. Or over two. Yes. So you can think or about it like this is option one. Okay. And option two, which is probably how you are going to see it as you advance through math. Is um, times one half. Yes, times one half. It's going to be base one plus base two times height times one half. It's the exact same thing. This, this is the exact same thing, right? Base one plus base two times height. Base one plus base two times height. The only difference is when you get that answer, now multiply by one half. Or when you get that answer, divide in half. It's the exact same thing. It's whatever you are more comfortable with, dividing or multiplying by, by one half. It does look confusing, and honestly, I think this leads into higher level math. It's kind of like learning length times width and then having to learn base times height. Like when you're a fourth grader, you don't have to be concerned with a three-dimensional object because you don't learn that in fourth or fifth grade. Um, but as a sixth grader, you have to start learning the new terminology it still represents length 
and with that you learned in fourth grade, but now it's it's getting you prepped for volume. And so that's why the they have to shift. And I'm pretty sure that's that's, was, that's this too. That's why I was like, wait, but this is this can't be the same because it's not like this is base two because it's longer. And it's, this is base one because it's longer. Right, exactly. So now let's just solve for this one. Let's say well, let's just solve. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Notice it goes from corner to corner. So I've got base 1, base 2, and height. Those are the three things I'm looking for. So base 2, I just counted 13. Base 1, I don't, and this is why you don't have to cut it off. You don't have to cut it off and turn it because you can just count. How many lines are is taken up by base one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're gonna add those two and you're gonna multiply by your height, which is one. You what? She was counting, you guys, she's counting the, the number of boxes. Yeah, I'm counting the boxes. One, two, three, four. Yes, 13 is base two. There's 13 boxes here. There are seven boxes here, and there's one, two, three, four, five, there. Now, why don't I do 13 times five first? It will, but as it's written, it says I should do 13 times five first. Parentheses. These are kind of critical, you guys. You have, this doesn't follow PEMDAS. I mean, it does once you put the parentheses in, but if you forget the parentheses, you're going to be doing this kind of backwards, right? So first of all, you've got to get that, that total, and then you have to remember to divide by 2 at the end. So 7 plus 13 50. Oh, 20. is 20 Sorry, the entire thing is 50. times no, 5 which is, 100. is 50 wait, no. divided no, by wait, 2. No, wait, is 100. You guys are tossing numbers at me. You're confusing your poor teacher. Well, All right. I already did it. 20 <laughs> times 5 is 100 <laughs> divided by 2 is 50. What? Now, if you are going to take the time, and you can certainly do this if you want, but it would be very difficult. If you were going to take the time, this is why centimeter paper is so nice, you could go through and say, okay, well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, and you can count up all the holes. And then, well, there's a half plus another half plus a half plus another half. You would get 50 squares. If you wanted to do that, feel free. I don't recommend it because that's kind of a, you know, not a waste of time, but I'm sure there's other things I can keep you busy with. So, 50 what? I've got half a point. Units. Units, thank you. Squared. Squared. Very good. Okay. Do we understand why the formula is the formula? Yes. Sort of. Yes, sort of. Okay, well, that's okay. 100%. Okay, good. It's great. 100%. We're good. We're fine. Things are okay. All right. We're going to look at one more. If you if, if you don't need to see the whole demonstration of it being cut or whatever, then feel free to try to solve for this one on your own. If you're kind of in the, well, I kind of get it, kind of don't, I'm going to go through that demonstration one more time to illustrate how we got what we got. All right. So I am going to... I'm going to do this part in pencil. Wait, wait, wait. Tell us the dimensions. I'm making a trapezoid. But I had to very lightly do that so I knew what I was doing here. This is a tricky one. Tricky, tricky. But this is a great one actually to look at, you guys, because... But it likes you. Okay, what is, what, what makes a trapezoid a trapezoid? One set of parallel lines. One set of parallel lines. Do I have one or two sets of parallel lines? One. one. I can tell because this one is two and this one is one, so these, therefore these cannot be parallel because this is narrower than it is here. Is it still a trapezoid? Yes. yes. Absolutely, it is still a trapezoid. So, same rules apply. Base one plus base two times height divided by two or times one half. So, what are you gonna do? I've what got, oh my gosh, what am I, what am I doing? Which one? You took them off the 
I've got, I've got two bases and I have a height and I'm so confused. Like what is happening right now? I don't have anything labeled. Which is which? But I need, but it can't be this one because I need two bases. Yes, remember I can flip this over. There's my base one and there's my base two. So remember, your bases are going to be the set of parallel lines. You have to have two. So you're looking for that set of parallel lines. That's your bases. So what does that mean this is? Height. height. And it looks so funny because it is sideways. But it is your height. And again, if you turn it so your parallel lines are your base one and base two, it makes a lot more sense. Okay. Now you need to know. Okay, so... Count with me, children. All right, we've got one, two. All right, so base two is worth two. Base one is worth one. And our height, one, two, three, four, five, six. Good job. All right, so I've got one plus two times six. One plus two in parentheses. Thank you. Thank you. Three times six is eighteen. The answer is nine. Divided by two. The answer is not nine. No, it's not. No, it's not. Thank you, Holly. Nine units squared. Technically, it's not nine. Technically, it's eighteen. You've come up with the correct answer, but not the correct solution. Uh, yes, Kyla. Uh, yes, let's look at, you guys want to look at the most difficult one? Yes, of course, what a ridiculous question. Okay. Ooh. Well, of course, why wouldn't you want to work through one where we get the answer together? So, let's see. I am not going to assign now. Um, oh, well. Well, this one I'd rather go over together with you after I've solved it first for myself. Um, okay, but let's do 21. So go ahead and write 21 in your journal, and then I'll put it back up. Okay, so this is very similar. This is 4.3. This is very similar to um, the one that we looked at to start the lesson with the two triangles, where you had one that was half as half as tall or whatever. I thought, I thought we had a quiz. You do have a quiz today, but you only have like 20 questions on this assignment. Yay! Okay, so let's draw this. You don't have to draw it perfectly, but you do have to make sure your labels are good. Um, so go ahead and draw that, draw that. Again, it does not have to be perfect. Okay, you come off the so this, yeah, so just so it looks like a trapezoid. You just basically have to understand that, that we are looking at a trapezoid here. And so this, it's a trapezoid. It's just really hard to show. Just, it's fine. You're fine. Everybody's fine. Okay. Well, it's there. 3D. You... Yes. Okay. All right. I will put the actual problem up in just a minute, but I have to get this on here first so you can see. So this is important for you to know. This is two times h. Okay. This is two h. Don't be confused yet. So here's two h. Here's 2b squared, uh, and down like here, oh, did you do that? How? That's funny. And then we've got 2b1. Okay, perfect. So, so what, does this, what does this mean? What does this 2b1 mean? 2 base 1. Right, it's twice times base 1 and twice times base 2, which means there must be another figure out there that has told you what base 1 and base 2 are. Which it is. It is this, it's the exact same thing that you just drew, only a teeny tiny baby guy. What? 
You guys are hilarious. Oh, because we're confused. Why? How is this confusing? You have the same. How is this confusing? You have the same thing. It's just smaller. Again, I'm gonna show you in the book. We could not do this most difficult one together. No. Oh. Oh, really? Your tune is changing. All right, and then. Okay. So this is exactly what I drew. It's like the spinning image. All right. So you've got base one, base two, and your height. This is the original. So when you're looking at this one, it's representing this is two times base one, this is two times base two, and this is twice the height. So it's doubled in size, basically, right? So um, what we have to do now is figure out how many times greater is the area of the floor covered by the large speaker than the smaller speaker. All right, this is the floor. Your floor is here. Oh, you're allowed to draw on those books? Oh, there no, who's here to stop me? I'm totally a rebel. Look at me, drawing in the book. I'll erase it later. Okay, um, all right, so this is the floor space it covers. So let's work with what we have here. Do I need to know the actual dimensions? Yes. Yes. No. 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 Because it's just asking how many times greater. It's not asking for what what the dimension is. It's just asking for how many times greater. So how would you solve for the area? And I'm just going to continue writing here so I don't have to go back and forth. How would you solve for the area of this um, large, well, let's do the large trapezoid first. What's the area of the large, how would I solve for the area of this guy right here? Okay, so I'm gonna take my base one information, which is 2B1, and my base two information, which is 2B2, right? It does not matter what the numbers are because you are not solving for the dimensions, you're just solving for how many times greater. So if this is twice of B1, and this is twice of B2, and this is twice of the height, I'm going to multiply that by 2H, and then times 1 half, okay? To decide how many times greater something is, you have to do the division, right? How many times greater is 4 than 2? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. How many times greater is 16 than 4? 4 times 4 is 16. So you have to find that missing factor. And how you find a missing factor is by dividing two numbers. So when you get this answer, you'll divide it by this answer. So what's the formula for this trapezoid? B1 plus, yeah, B1. B1 plus B2 times H, again, times 1 half. And the reason I'm not doing divided by 1 half or divided by two is because that would be very, very confusing when writing it like this. So this is the comparison formula, and it, and it could look something just like what I just said. How many times greater is 14 than two? Seven. It's a division problem. How many times greater is this than that? Well, find the area, find the area, and divide, okay? What, but you don't need to, you don't need to. So, is it six? well, let's see. So let's simplify. I'm running out of room in this textbook. They don't give me enough room to write in these things. All right. So, I know, I know. Maybe there's a reason for that. All right. So I'm going to scratch this out real quick. 2B1 plus 2B2 times 2H times 1 half divided by B1 plus B2 times height. Tell me. Tell me now. Times one half. Okay, so let's go ahead and combine like terms. So how many, so if I've got B1 plus B2, and then, so I'm going to have 4H here. So I've got, for the, for the large trapezoid, for the, for the, <laughs> For the large trapezoid, I'm gonna have four. I'm gonna have four H's. Four. 
plus B1 plus D2 because they are using the distributive property. Two times two is four, right? Okay. And then here, you are going to have just exactly the same height times B1 plus B2. I put them in here. But there was already two there. But remember, I had to divide it in half. So it oh, would have been four. It would have been eight. And, okay, yeah, no, it no, would no. have been four. Two times two is four. Oh, two I times two is four. Oh, times one half is this four. Is not, I don't like this. Okay, and now this one you'll like because it gets to stay the same. This is why we're doing this one together. And I promise I will not give you a more difficult one than this. Okay, um, so yes, it would have been distributive property. Two times two is four, plus two times two is four. Four plus four is eight. Then you divide it in half and you get four. And now because we've already divided, we only have base one and base two left. And this one just gets to stay the same height. I, re I rearranged this. It's four times greater. Yeah, it's four times greater. Well, at least first you said six and then I said eight and then I said four. And eventually you were going to come across the right answer. Yeah. Oh, you just kept guessing. Good. No, and I so, didn't guess. I was the process. All right. So what happens with B1 in my numerator and B1 in my denominator? They're the same. They are the same. They cross each other out. Yay. What happens with B2 and B2? Cross oh, they yeah. cross each other out. What happens with 4 divided? 4H four four is divided by 1H. 5H. What? Divided. Divided. Four, four. Uh, yes, because these H's cancel each other out, and I'm left with it's four. Four, four, four times greater. That's okay, because I'm not going to assign you a problem that looks yes. like that. Yay. So, however, thank you for hanging in there while we worked through that. All right. Is the video still working? Well, it's still running. I don't know. I really hope Kai didn't miss that, because I don't know that I can try to explain that one again. Just, say, um, just tell them it's four. Just tell them it's four. The answer is four. When in doubt, say four. Okay. Uh, it is 12.06. I'm going to stop this recording. Yeah.